so glad you're with me on the Thriving Christian Artist podcast today. Of course, I'm Matt Tommy, your host, and uh, super glad that you are here. And I'm glad to introduce you to a friend of mine, Michelle Culp, who is not only an author, but an encourager and equipper of artists uh, and authors and, and anybody really with a message who wants to get that message into a book and see that book uh, become a bestseller, to see, see that book go all over the world and impact the lives of tons and tons of people. That's what we're going to be talking about today. It's something that God has done in my life uh, through writing numerous books over the years, starting with Unlock in the Heart of the Artist back in 2009 when I started that. And actually, this year is the 10-year anniversary of that. I can't believe it. But um, it's amazing what God does when you write your story down in book format. And so we're going to be talking about how that happens. Uh, Michelle's got a great book called 28 Books to 100K that you can find out about right down in the show notes here. And you can you can find that on Amazon and grab it. And uh, if you've got a book in you or maybe multiple books, you can start using that as a really, really great and simple guidebook to start writing uh, maybe your first or maybe multiple books uh, in your future. All right. So I hope you enjoy today's podcast. You're going to love Michelle and love all the all the great energy she, that she brings. But before we do that, you know that I love to give a shout out to all my podcast listeners. And so one today that I'm going to give a shout out to is actually named Music Man over on Podbean. Thanks for listening over on Podbean if you're, uh, if you're listening over there. And he says this, I love, love, love your podcast. The wisdom and passion just ooze from you and your guests. May God continue to bless you, your family, and your ministries. Well, Music Man, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. And of course, I love it anytime uh, you guys are able to to give a review and let us know that you're out there listening. It really makes uh, making these podcasts a lot of fun, knowing that they're going into into your home or in your car or into your, your AirPods or wherever you're listening and, uh, and making a difference in your life. So thanks again for that. And if you are out there listening now and you've not subscribed yet or you've not done a review, please, please do that. It really helps us get the word out and also just encourages our team to let us know that they were making a difference in your life. All right. Well, my friend, I'm going to get out of the way. You're going to love today's episode with my friend, Michelle Culp. And again, remember to go to the show notes and click the links that are there so that you can find out about all the great resources that she's got are for you if you're wanting to write your first book. All right, here's Michelle. Michelle, so glad you're with me today. Thank you, Matt. I'm excited to be here. You know, I love what you do. We've been getting to know each other over the last few weeks and one of these kind of serendipitous meetings of somebody said, Matt, you should meet Michelle. And then we met and I was like, I love what she does. And then the more we talked, I was like, you have got to meet our podcast audience. And uh, and it was that quick. I was on the show. I went to your calendar that day and I was like, let me get on the show right now. <laughs> I got Let's to do it. That. Right. No time like the present. But for those folks who are just getting to know you and that sort of thing, why don't we kind of roll back the tape a little bit. So who you are, what you do and a um, little bit of your, your backstory. Sure. Um, like many people, my first career and my first love was law. I went from college um, and I became a paralegal for 17 years and I really I did love the law and I loved my job for many years but um, I don't know who coined this term it's called career creep and career <laughs> creep is when um, you're doing one job and you love it and all of a sudden the tasks that you do they change over time and so you wake up one day and like you used to love 75 percent of what you do right and then all of a sudden, 75% of what you do is not what you love anymore. Oh, yeah, and so yeah. you're, you have this career creep. And it's like this phenomena that happens in a lot of jobs. And I didn't know why I hated my job all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was pretty young. And I woke up and I was like, I, I can't go to work. I was calling in sick. I was like really miserable. And, um, and it, I felt like it was draining to my soul. Like I couldn't do it anymore. And so as fate would have it, I get fired from my job at the law firm. And it was a blessing in disguise because I was <laughs> not happy. And I think they definitely knew it. And they're there. I mean, when I say fired, what what they did was they said, um, the department you work in has been restructured and your job no longer exists. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, Here's your invitation, was, right? <laughs> invitation. And I um, I really wanted to pursue my passion for writing, which I, I didn't always know I had a passion for writing, but I had a serendipitous meeting with Billy Ray Cyrus to ask me what my dreams were about. And 
when I met him, I said, I don't have any dreams. My life's about survival. And he said, everybody has a dream. I need you to go out and find your dream and promise wow. me that you'll find this dream. And I did find my dream by reading a little book by Richard Bowles called How to Find Your Mission in Life. And in that book, it said, what do you love to do where you lose all sense of time? And a lot of times we can go back to our childhood and that's where I went. And I said, oh, I loved writing. I always yeah. wrote poems and essays and short stories and reports for school I was excited about. So I knew that was part of my dream. But of course, I, I was, you know, paralegal and I was doing legal writing, but I was talking about the create, you know, being on the creative side. So I left the legal field. I got, I became a reporter for a local newspaper. I did that for a while, didn't pay that well. So I was like, I got to figure something else out. Yeah. Ended up doing outside sales for 10 years and starting my first online business, become a six figure woman.com. I started that in 2005. So I've been online for a long time and I always wanted to write books, but in, you know, I was really just teaching classes. And in 2011, I wrote my first book and a year later I had zero sales. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. How does this Amazon thing work? I thought right. you just push publish and everybody finds your book and you're an instant success. You know, the, the author, every author's dream, right? It's That's like right. I'm a million copies of my book and I'm going to be famous and all this stuff. Well, nobody found my book in one year, not one person on Amazon. Wow. And so as fate would have it, I was part of the National Speakers Association in Washington, D.C., and I went to this meeting, and there was literally was a woman there teaching a class called How to Become a Best-Selling Author. I took her class. I relaunched a book. I had 2,158 people get my book in one day. Wow. Best-selling author. I know, one day. And I said, oh, my God. It's, it's the whole platform. It's understanding keywords yeah. and categories and, you know, um, getting visibility on these bestsellers lists. And so from there, I ended up publishing um, probably about eight books. And then in January, 2020, I read an article by Written Word Media that said the average 100K author has 28 books. So immediately the crazy thought popped in my head, I'm gonna write a book a month and I'm gonna test this theory. And it was really just an experiment. Right, I wasn't, right. wasn't doing it for you know like a course or a program. So I started writing a book a month, January, 2020. And for 12 consecutive months, I wrote a book a month and I created $3,300 in passive income. So I was close to being halfway there of my yeah. goal of hitting 100K. And now I'm continuing on now this year in creating new products, like repurposing some of those books and writing some new books as well. So I think that everybody has a book in them. I'm sure your audience does. Everybody Absolutely. has a book in them. And the two things I learned from writing a book a month is it doesn't have to take that long. We all complicate things. And actually the short, the shorter books are better because people's attention span is shorter and they don't need the manifesto. Just, you know, pick one topic of like a bigger topic and write a book on it. And then you can write a series of books. That's so good. You know, you, you talk about everybody has a, a book in them. And I think, you know, as people start to, to think about that, they may think, well, gosh, I'm a, I'm a visual artist. Do I really have a book in me? I mean, how would somebody even go, go about starting to think about potentially having a book in them if that's not even on their radar right now? Well, I have a lot of, um, um, you know, questions you can ask yourself, but it's, it's usually about what you get excited about, mm. something that you always talk about with other people or maybe blogs and podcasts that you follow or just um, types of books that you read, that you like reading, because I believe that, um, that writers are readers. So, right. you know, look at, Look at what you read, what you look at, what you're following and, you know, what you get excited about. And also um, there's a saying, make your mess your message. A lot of us have stories from our past that we've Absolutely. had to overcome a lot of obstacles and trials and tribulations. And that is a book right there. Just take that, transform that pain and that stuff, you know, that you overcame and help somebody else with it. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, I think in marketing, sometimes we call that the hero's journey, right? You know, you, yes. you're walking through this process. And I, it's funny, when I wrote my first book, Unlocking the Heart of the Artist, back, it came out in 2011. I initially wrote that um, kind of as the notes from a small group journey that I was teaching at the time of helping artists to get over their junk in their life and, you know, really become who God created them to be. And it was funny, I gave no thought at all to putting 
my story in that. And yet one of my friends, uh, Bessie Rhodes, who is a phenomenal writer, marketer, ghost writer for years, she was like, Matt, this is good information, but people don't just buy information. She's like, you know, where's the story in it? Put your story in it. And I think that's that becomes the secret sauce a lot of times for people in me because that's where the related relational end of things happens. I'm so glad you said that because the story is what we all try to hide, right? Mm. We need to appear perfect and nobody's perfect, right? And right. so we don't want people to sort of to see that side of us. We're kind of conditioned in a way, just in the world that we're living in. I mean, I grew up in a different generation, at, you know, as I'm sure you did. We didn't even have social media. Thank right. God, actually, that we didn't have that. <laughs> exactly. But I was an uh, adolescent. But um, but yeah, it, um, I forgot what I was saying. The um, what were we talking about? <laughs> um, I forgot what the question you asked me was. Well, just the whole idea of your story and relational. And, oh, right. And not putting the story in. So I was thinking about a class I took on these past two Saturdays. It was a memoir class. And the lady who was teaching it is my go somebody I use for ghostwriting for my clients. She's also a full-time attorney, a part-time judge, and she's written four humorous books that sound like Irma Bombeck oh, kind yeah. of style. And she, she's hilarious. But anyway, so I'm in the memoir class. And um, one of the ladies said, the story you don't want to tell is the story you need to tell. Mm. And so, and the other thing about memoirs is it's very vulnerable. It's very personal, right? And so you're sharing that, but you know, Bre Brene Brown became very famous because of this whole thing on being vulnerable. Right. And, you know, just like you said, you wrote the book and you gave great information, but people want to feel the emotion. They want the story. Why, why are you even writing this book? What happened to make you write this book? What did you have to overcome in your life? Um, so I think, I think it's really important that we connect the story and not that we have to tell every detail of our life and, you know, all, sure. all the personal stuff, but, right. but I do think we have to um, have a level of, you know, um, vulnerability and sharing um, who we are with the world in our books. And sometimes I do that and I'm like, well, what does this have to do with the, with the book? But it, it really gives people an insight into who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Now your book, 28 books to hundred K, I mean, fabulous book, quick read. So practical. I've read it actually twice. Thank you. I had somebody in my Facebook group said they read it seven times. It, and you know what that means? It's a short read. Yeah. You can read yeah. this book seven times. I mean, it, it's not going to take, it's going to take you, you know, a couple hours to read through it. It absolutely is. And it's super duper practical. So we're definitely, you know, folks, you can grab that, uh, the link to that in the show notes. You can go right to the to Amazon and grab that from Michelle. Thank you. But Michelle, you know, somebody's thinking, okay, maybe there's a book in me. Maybe there's a story that sort of thing. What are the top two or three things that you would say? Because you've got a lot more in the book, but what are a couple of the top things that you would say, these are the things you need to start doing as you prepare um, to write that book? Well, there's something called right to market. I don't know if you've ever heard the term. There's yes. some books written about it. Chris Fox wrote a book, Right to Market. And so what I found from um, working with authors since 2013 is a lot of authors just are like, you know, this is the book I want to write. This is the book, you know, this is, um, this is, you know, the title of the book or they already wrote the book, Right. but they never think about keywords and how people are searching on Amazon. Who's so going to buy it, right? <laughs> right. You want to yeah. know why I had zero sales of that book was because I never gave it a thought about categories and keywords and how people find your book. So think about it this way. If you put up a website and you want to be on page one of Google, you have to do something called search engine optimization on your website. You have to tell Google, what are the keywords? What is my blog about or my website about? So Google knows when people type in those keywords that your website should show up. It's the same on Amazon. You have to really um, almost reverse engineer your book in a way. You can say, I want to write a book about this topic, but then you need to go, and I have a tool I use called Publisher Rocket, and I go and I look Love up the keywords. <laughs> yes, yeah. I actually figure out what are the keywords? Are people searching for it? Is there a market for it? Are there successful books already being sold on it? If the answer is yes, yes, and yes, then we can we have a green light and we can proceed. Now I'll give you an example of a client who had a red light and I talked them out of writing this book. 
They came to me last year and they said, um, we want to write a book about English cottage gardens. And I said, oh, okay, well, I don't have any gardening you know, clients and um, let me check out the keywords. So I got back to them a week later and I said, nobody's searching for English cottage gardens. There are no books right now. Now, there could have been a time when, when those were a hot right. item, I don't know, but um, I said, nobody's searching for them and there aren't really any books making any money on English Cottage Garden. So I will not take you on as a client, but during my research, I found something interesting. There were um, a lot of searches for raised bed gardening and container garden gardening. And I said, so if, if you know a lot about that topic and you want to write a book, then let, let's do it. And they hired me. We wrote a book and the books on that topic are making $25,000 a month. Believe wow, it or not. Wow. Gardening is a hot topic right now. Yeah. I know nothing about gardening, but you know, I helped my client write a book in 12 weeks in my 12 week, I have a done for you program. So right. in 12 weeks, the client wrote the book. We published the ebook, the print book. She's got the color version, the black and white version. She's got a blog now. She does gardening coaching now. Um, she she has an Amazon gardening store. I mean, she's created a whole business Love it. On, on this gardening thing. And that is the point here is make sure there's a market for what you want to write. Don't just pick something out of the hat and say, oh, okay, I wrote a book and nobody wants it. Because that's Absolutely. I mean, I think for anybody that's creating any kind of content, we end up you know, because you may be passionate about something, we end up answering questions that nobody's asking. And, yes. you know, you feel self-important and you feel really passionate, but you're not <laughs> actually doing what's in you to do, which is help others. And so yes, exactly. that's, that's so huge. So, you know, as you're helping her start to think about, you know, writing this, this whole process and that sort of thing, like when I start to write a book and, you know, this is just the way I do it, I start like with an outline, like what would I want the table of contents to be? And then I start putting, you know, notes under each one of those, like quotes from other books. Or I mean, what are some of yeah. the, the pro tips you would say that that somebody needs to be doing as they're as they're considering writing? Well, I talk about this in 28 books to 100 K right. and it's called mind mapping, which a lot of people have heard of. And basically, like if I have a topic I want to write a book about, I just take a couple post-it pads, like different colors, and I'll write every everything I can think of about that topic. And then um, I'll set a timer though. It'll only be like five minutes, right? Because if we if we think about it too long, it's sort of like doing timed writing. You know, if, if you only have five minutes to write about something, you're you're gonna get right to the point or whatever. You don't wanna overthink it. So five or 10 minutes, mind map, you take post-it notes, you write everything you 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 can think of about that topic. When the five minutes or 10 minutes are up, then you group those into, and this is kind of what you're talking about, how you mm -hmm. get to the outline part. You just yeah. group them, what, what is similar, you know, and you put them in groups. And then you may say, you may look at it and say, oh, well, this is actually two different books. You know, like there's a book about this topic and I can write a book on this, or maybe it is all one book or whatever. But a lot of times it's more than one book. So, you, you know, this does help you sort of sort things out. And then from that mind map where you have all these post-it notes, you can then sort of work, you know, have a working outline. So you don't, it, it, things can change because as you write the book, things do change. Like yeah, you sure. say, these are my 12 chapters. And, and sometimes like maybe the first three will be like whatever I wrote, like, you know, we're gonna, and then all of a sudden it's like, no, I need to write, you know, this and the chapters that's change right. and that's fine, but you got started and you know where you're going with the book. And the point of the book is to get somebody to point A to point C, right? B is the process. Like right. I'm taking them across the river on these little steps and here, here's where I'm taking them to. So I think mind mapping is a good idea. I have done it without an outline and with an outline. And I can tell you, I cannot write a book a month without an outline. It's yeah. like my mind is all over the place. I'm going in 5 million different directions. I keep creative people like, you know, we have a hundred ideas before breakfast. So you really need to rein that stuff in and have a working outline. Well, and I'm a, I'm a big believer. We teach this in our mentoring program all the time of, you know, stewarding the inspiration that comes to you, you know, because inspiration is like clouds, you know, they just kind of float by. And if you don't grab that thing, you know, if you don't do something with it, literally last night, um, I was uh, thinking about an idea. And now that I'm thinking like this more intentionally, I ran to my computer and for about 20 minutes, I was just like, you know, and Tanya was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm writing a book. Well, not really. I'm writing an outline for a book, but I'm going to. I love and, it. 
And what I've learned over the years, and this may be a, a tip for somebody out there too, if you're already blogging and you're already even, I've started recording my Facebook posts. So, cause a lot of times I figured, you know, I, I look back and I'm like, you know what, I'm writing some pretty good stuff on Facebook. And then it just kind of disappears into the ether. So I'll grab that stuff and I put it like in my notes area um, in my computer. That way, when I get ready to write, I've got all this fodder, if you will, that's already yeah. there so that it's, it's massaging rather than just sitting there coming up with something right on the fly, right? Yeah, I always feel like you write a book mentally first before yeah. you actually write it on paper. That's good. And it was funny what you said about like ideas floating by like clouds and you've got to grab it. So Elizabeth Gilbert, I'm sure you know who she is. She yeah. wrote Pray Love and she wrote a book called Big Magic. And in the book Big Magic, which is all about the creative process, um, she talks about um, that the universe gives us, you know, an idea. And if we don't act on it quickly, they, the universe gives that, you know, to somebody else. Right, right. It tells the story of this, this very detailed novel. Like it was very specific, like she was going to write. And she had the outline done and, and all of a sudden some like major stuff happened in her life. And she kind of put it on the back shelf. And two years later, she became friends with a pretty well-known writer. I forget her name now, but um, all of a sudden, the, the, they never talked about um, Elizabeth's novel idea. And all of a sudden, this woman was writing the exact storyline and the exact framework of what was going to be Elizabeth's novel. And she wow. said, we never talked about it, but that idea, the universe gives it to you. You don't act on it. Guess what? Going on to the next person. Okay. And we're going to see if they act on it. Doesn't, they don't act on it. It goes on to the next person. That's right. You know, I always say opportunities are like waves. I mean, they, 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 just like you're saying, they come, yeah. they go, you can ride the wave, you can miss the wave, whatever. Yeah. But, um, and the good thing is, I think there's another wave coming. I mean, if you're out there and you're yeah. like, I missed my opportunity. No, there's there's more coming. There's plenty for everybody. You know, so. there's there's a hundred behind that one that you missed. But but you have to really start, you know, noticing those. And I think um, so. One of the things I did after I left the legal field was I used to teach the artist way by Julia Cameron. Yeah. First, I became a reader and a student of the book, and then I was going to Unity Church and I wanted to teach classes. And I'm like, well, what do I what am I going to teach about? And so I just all of a sudden decided I'm going to teach the artist way because I like the way it was broken down 12 weeks of reclaiming your creativity. And when I left the legal field, I felt like the creativity had been drained from me. Like mm. I had zero, I was not expressing myself in any way. And that's probably why I was so unhappy. So it was really interesting to teach um, the artist way because so many people were feeling like that too, because they were in the corporate world they were in the nine to five grind. They were not expressing themselves. And, you know, I believe if you don't, what you don't express gets depressed. And so yeah. a lot of people experience depression because they're not expressing themselves. I mean, it doesn't have to, always, you know, be books. It could be, like you said, you know, different types of um, sure. art and all that stuff. But for me, it was books. And so I went, I, be, I taught the class, but I think whatever we teach, we're teaching ourselves at a deeper level. So I was really teaching myself about reclaiming my own creativity, but I had a lot of people take that class and they were very high level executives, lawyers, you know, doctors, whatever, just people that were like, yeah, I don't have any creativity in my life. And what do yeah. I do about it? I love that. I love that. You know, you mentioned briefly, you know, as you started your journey in writing and, you know, the first year now there's $3,300 or whatever of, you know, recurring income and that sort of thing coming in. And for so many people, you know, that would absolutely change their life, you know, to be able to have a multiple streams of income, recurring income yes. coming into their life on a regular basis. Talk about that just, you know, as somebody that went from, having a salary and working a job for a lot of years toward switching to this mentality of being able to create the wealth that you, you want to and, and have that be unlimited and have that flowing into your life on a regular basis. I mean, that is, I know for us, that's been super duper duper powerful and transformative. Yeah. And how has that been for you, uh, especially somebody, again, coming out of the corporate world? Oh God, it was such a, such a shift in my mind. I mean, I, when I got an outside sales, which was all commission and no steady paycheck, I tried to quit that job like six <laughs> times. My boss, Bob Arnold would not let me quit. Right. He's like, Michelle, you're going to be great. You know, you're going to do awesome. You're going to be a top income earner. And I'm like, Bob, 
I didn't sell. I, I went from law to hot tubs, by the way. I sold hot tubs for 10 years. Wow. Outside sales in a very uh, male dominated industry at, at the time. I worked there from 2000 and I think it was 2002 to 2010. Uh, or 12, some, somewhere when the housing market crashed, the, yeah. house, the hot tub market crashed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People weren't buying them. But anyways, um, it was a totally different mindset. And my I kept wanting to go back to the steady paycheck, like for about a year or two. I kept like, it was so scary to me um, that I, uh, and I was so conditioned, right? Like I, I know what to expect. I have a paycheck. And when I was in outside sales, two weeks could go by and I didn't have a paycheck. And I was a single mom with three kids. But once I hit six figures in about 18 months and I was working 20 hours, so half the time of my legal yeah. job, making twice the money, then I became a believer in, you don't need a steady paycheck. That's you right. know? And I also became a believer in multiple streams of income because um, not only had I created the hot tub income stream, but I then started the online business in 2005. I was teaching online courses, which was the funnest thing in the world to create a course once and keep getting paid on it. That, that was just as exciting as this, this book thing, you know, writing the books and having this income. So it's definitely a mindset shift and a paradigm shift in going from, you know, that steady paycheck to multiple streams of income. But I always tell my clients, when one stream dries up, you better have another one coming in. That's right. In the legal field, I had one stream. And that one stream ended when they fired me. And guess what? I didn't have any other streams at the time. That's why I was so terrified with three young kids. Yeah. So now my streams of income are my royalties, which I want to get them to six figures. And that's my goal for this year. I'm still continuing to create a new product, new book every month this year till I get to 20. When I get to 28 books, I should be at 100K. That that's is right. Cool. And I have other people like you who actually are repurposing content. They already have blog posts and podcast shows and i like what you said about the facebook post yeah, yeah. why waste that content you can create a book with it so a hundred page book is only fifteen thousand words i mean you can literally write that in in a week or less than a week and then yes it has to go to editing and formatting and all those other things but you can you can create the content and 3300 a month i mean that is that could pay somebody's bills. It almost pays my bills, not quite, but I'm almost there where it can, it's almost paying all of my living expenses. It's definitely pay, paying my housing expenses. Yeah. And that could change somebody's life. And if you think about it, right, one short book a month for 12 months, and I've already exceeded what I'll be receiving from Social Security if there is money left. Right. When I <laughs> get to collect in about 10 years. I've already exceeded that in one year. And I call that digital retirement. And I wrote a whole book about that. I love that. I love that. Well, that's the concept we teach absolutely in the mentoring program of, you know, I call it our Parthenon plan, having a lot of different pillars underneath your, the oh, roof like of your, that. of your I business, like you know, but having those multiple streams. And it's funny, you know, this, this whole pandemic, you know, year and years now that we've been <laughs> we're walking through my students and, and clients who are doing the very best are ones who are had positioned themselves, you know, with multiple streams. And even though one may have dried up, like their, you know, their in-person shows or whatever, they were, they were able to pivot and it already pivoted into other areas so that the income, although it dried up in one area, it started flowing a lot more in the other. And I think just for, for all of us in this, in this digital economy that, that we're in, we've got to have all sorts of different streams coming in because nobody's going to, you know, provide the, the days are over when you're going to work with the same person for 30 years and oh, go get a pension. I mean, on, and there's still people yeah. holding on, you yeah. know, to, yeah. to that. Uh, my dad is 84 years old and works full time as a water meter reader. He's been there 25 years and this is his second career. He had wow. a 30 year career in retail management for a men's clothing store called Bonds and he's still working full time doing it. But I think that's the last generation, you know, yeah. what I mean, that has those kind of 25 year terms now it is um uh, there's a book called the gig economy and there's also yeah. another book called the end of jobs so th this is really writing a short book a month i believe everybody um has a message that they can share with the world and, it, and if you structure it right instead of just writing one book about it write a series of books about that's the right topic. that's right yep. well michelle what a joy to have you on you're such an encouragement to me and i know to my listeners and yeah. Let everybody know, uh, obviously go to Amazon to grab all your books and that sort of thing. And we'll have links there, but uh, is there a website you want everybody to go to to find out more about all you're doing? Yes, bestsellingauthorprogram.com is my website. And I have a free gift on there, which is actually 
module one. So this has now turned into an online course and a group coaching program. So they can get module one of the course, um, which actually has the, um, the templates that I use to create a book a month. So if you, even if you want to write a book every two months or every three months or whatever, yeah. I give you all the templates that you need to, to write your book a month or um, and I also give you an author archetype so you can see what your archetype is when you're, you know, the voice that you use when you're writing your book. And I, I just give you some free training and all my checklists for the bestseller stuff and all that is in module one. So you can grab that at bestsellingauthorprogram.com. I love it. I love it. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, everybody, like, like she said, go to that website, go to the link that's right here in the show notes and you can grab all the great resources that she's talking about. Michelle, thanks for being on today. Thank you, Matt. I had fun. It was great. Thank you.